Now, is this a fashion statement or what? You can see Aaron today is sporting the lightweight waders. I'm wearing these are the new insulated waders. They don't slide. Can you undo me? This is like a, <laughs> the, the, the snap. Where's the snap? Oh, this belt? doesn't look good. It's like a different nylon material. And it actually, it's like spandex almost. It's really important that you have the felt bottoms on the boots. I can wear these waders in the middle of the summer because they're breathable waders. Basically, don't even feel like I have anything on except the pants underneath, of course. You if know you what? Notice, I didn't notice that. There's an actual hook and loop enclosure at the yeah, back that's that smart. catches on. And it has uh, a nice waterproof pocket right in the front yeah. and a little uh, kangaroo, color underneath. kangaroo pouch. <laughs> but it's waterproof. It's great. People when you're in the mood, let's go fishing. Well, it's just me and you. Head on down to the fishing hole. Grab your hat, get your pole. Let's go fishing when you're in the mood. Canadian Sport Fishing is brought to you by Rapala. Premium fishing gear crafted from experience. Yamaha. Conquer Outdoors. Insect Defend Patch, deep free protection from biting insects. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. Aaron, is this kind of neat or what? This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm out with Aaron Shirley again, and we're both passionate tributary fishermen. We love to fish for migratory rainbows and browns, and we're doing something a little bit different. We're in Upper New York State, and we're fishing one of the tributaries, but instead of wading and uh, fishing from shore, we're actually using the new canoe. Now, this isn't a monster brown, but you know what? It's a gorgeous fish. I saw the colors. I think it's a little female. Mulligan, do you see it? Yeah, nice gold brown. I'm gonna try to hold it there. You know, we're talking about uh, mid-November, getting into the end of November, and uh, the temperature's getting a little bit cold, and you could be, you could be wading in the water, but this is kind of nice that uh, we can be here in these new canoes, staying nice and dry. This is a typical brown that you get here in upper New York State. Um, that fish will go about uh, four pounds, and you can see that uh, it hit the spawn sack very lightly, just on the edge of the mouth. Isn't that a nice brown? I'm going to very gently get it back into the net and we're going to be releasing it. This is a nice fish. Just going to extend him out a little bit, get his head out. You know what? Look at, he's ready to go. Nice female. She's probably going to get on with her spawning. Come on. There she goes. Perfect. Now, what the plan was for today for Aaron and I was to start drifting here and then work our way down. So where we are now, you can see a lot of people are actually wade fishing because this is the end pretty well of the rapids. But as soon as you get down around the corner, the water gets quite deep and the bottom becomes silty because all the deposits drift down. So it actually gets difficult to wade. And when you're wading, you're right up to your chest. Aaron, that was on eggs. You can oh, see fantastic. I'm only running about a two and a half foot lead. So that's the second fish. The first one I lost just after the hook set. And that was on eggs as well? Yeah. Beautiful. Xmark, you find fish, catch of the day. Hi Harley, it's Tony Brecknock calling. So I'm looking at uh, this cute young guy with a four pound smallmouth that you uploaded to our You Find Fish catch of the day. And I need to know all about your catch. Okay, so uh, this was one of my first outings with my son, Reese. Um, he's seven years old. This is both of our first year fishing together seriously at all. And uh, we're out in one of our favorite spots out in Lake St. Clair. And this is one of the first bass he's pulled up completely on his own, right from setting the hook to reeling him in the boat. And uh, we netted her up. He took it off and we took the picture and then uh, he put him back in the water and off he went. It was a good experience and a good day. Closed captioning is brought to you by Arctic Armor. Warm, dry, alive.
you know, if you've watched the shows for some time, you know that I love to fish in all different conditions, whether it's extremely hot or whether it's extremely cold, like ice fishing or even open water fishing in the middle of the winter time, like on the Niagara River. When one of the things that I try to do is wear the proper clothing. And when it's cold, I usually use bibs and a top or a full suit. Now, what I'm wearing today is the Arctic Armor suit. And I gotta tell you, this thing is amazing. It's windproof, it's waterproof, and it's good in sub-zero conditions. One of the reasons is because of this insulation that they use, it's called Insultex. And they actually have three layers of this insulation in this suit. The suit is very lightweight, but this Insultex, it, it keeps the cold out. So one layer, will keep the cold out to about minus 13 Fahrenheit, which is amazing. So let me um, clarify some things about layering, because when I was younger, and I used to wear, you know, whatever I had, I would layer it in the wintertime, and I thought that would keep me warm. That's not necessarily the case. So if you're wearing an Arctic Armour suit, it's very important that you don't layer very much, and if you layer, that you use the proper materials, something that will breathe, so that if you do start to perspire initially, especially if you're cutting holes, or moving from spot to spot or doing a lot of things where you exert a lot of energy that if you get moisture that moisture won't be trapped in your body it has to be able to vent so don't layer too heavy if you're wearing an arctic armor suit because the suits will keep you very warm and if you fall in the water they're buoyant and that's a good thing You know, the one thing that both Aaron and I are doing, we're using center pin float outfits. So the reel that I'm using looks like a fly reel. This particular one is made by Rapala, it's a shift. It's called a setback because you can see that the reel seat is back a little bit. It's not right over the reel in the center. And this type of a reel is ideal when you're drift fishing with a float or float drifting. It's a nice brown again. You know, the one nice thing about the new canoes is that they're so stable especially if you get the accessory of this leaning bar, like I've got at the front here, it's very comfortable. But you know what? When you're drifting over and over again, you kind of want to sit down because the seats are so comfortable. We've got visibility of about one foot. So that's actually good when it comes to tributary fishing because the fish don't spook as much. But you know, the way Aaron and I are fishing with the new canoes, we're not making any wake. It's really stealth fishing. See, this guy's not really ready to come in, but I'm going to try to get him in the net. All right, got him in there. Nice brown. So I'm just going to let some line out of the reel. One thing I really like about these shift reels is that they have a very strong clicker. So I just turned the clicker on because I don't want the line to just free spool out. He hit that spawn sack and I hooked him just in the roof of the mouth. So it's a very easy release. There, the hook is out and I'll just very gently switch hands here. This is a really nice fish. Look at those gorgeous colors. You know, they call him a brown trout for a reason. You can see that nice kipe on the lower jaw. So he's almost ready. I just want to make sure that he's nice and healthy. Because these fish will come back year after year to spawn. And some of the browns can get upwards of 15, 20 pounds. Oh, he's ready. There he goes. Fisher girl! Catch the passion! Girls that want to make a statement in the ice hut. Get all flashy. Wow, those are bright lights. And you know what, usually in an ice side, it's a little darker because it's got little windows and stuff. Exactly, it's a perfect entertainment feature as well, right? I can see that. And you know what, again, it's a solid fiberglass blank. It's got the nice insert for the guides. And one thing I like about the guides, they're oversized, which is very important for ice fishing because the larger the guide, the less chance that water's gonna build up and that they're gonna freeze, especially if they step outside and fish a little bit in the open air. And the bonus with all of the outfits from Fisher Girl, especially the ice fishing one, that they give a percentage of the sale to cancer research. That's why you have the pink ribbon on all their outfits. You know, just for a break, we actually started heading down river where the bottom is a little bit softer and a little bit deeper water. And we thought, you know what? Let's take a few casts just by wading. So we anchored up the new canoes. We got all our gear in it, which is kind of nice. And we can jump in there at any point. And we only fished here about maybe 10 minutes. And I've got another nice brown on. You can see how uh, turbid that water is. Look at nice big yap. I think this is a male. Um, so that water clarity isn't very good, but it's perfect for the type of uh, steelhead fishing or tributary fishing that we're doing. 
It's funny, we're calling this steelhead fishing, but we're really getting brown trout, so it's kind of neat. Yeah. Well, that's the nice thing a about bit. a Lake Ontario tributary. Yeah. Look at you. He doesn't have a chance. Got beautiful. You. Oh, Good. beautiful color. Nice job. That's a nice brown. They're gorgeous. Let oh, me put absolutely. the reel on lock here so it doesn't... They're one of the most pretty fish on Lake Ontario. They are. You know, when you think of fly fishermen, you know, in the fabled things about casting a fly and hooking a brown, I mean, to most people, a brown this size would be a trophy. We, oh, it'd be a monster. We're spoiled. We're spoiled. We're very spoiled. Look at, look at how beautiful that brown trout is. Gorgeous. Just classic colors. You know, you could keep these fish. There are limits on them and stuff, but they're so beautiful. Look at Somebody else is going to catch it. Just to touch base on the actual setup that we're using today. I have a pretty unique setup. I know some people like to use what they call a shot line, and I've been doing this for a number of years. And what I do is I actually add micro swivel on my line above my float. And it's pretty small. I don't know the exact size, but it's a micro swivel. It's very small, it's black. And what I do is I add a length of line that's probably about maybe four feet long to another swivel. And this is my shot line. And a lot of people are starting to do this now. And this whole line comes all the way down to the float and all the shot. And the shot is all staggered beneath my float to another micro swivel. And from that micro swivel, I have a leader with no shot on it whatsoever, usually anywhere between about 18 inches, well, maybe even a foot to about two feet in length. And this is basically a shot line from here to here. I actually have several different shot lines like this with floats on them set up for different tributaries. One for smaller tributaries, one for medium-sized tributaries, and one for large tributaries such as like the Niagara River, for example, I would work on like the Saugeen or even some of the big rivers out west. What this does is this allows me, whatever tributary I'm fishing, I just take it from the garage, I have them all hanging up, and whatever tributary I'm fishing, I take that particular setup, and I take the micro swivel at the top, tie it onto my main line, and I'm good to go. Now, one other thing that that micro swivel does up here is that actually reduces line twist as well for when you're casting. Because sometimes on the larger tributaries especially, you're casting a far distance, and what that does is it reduces the amount of line twist you have on your center pin reel. You know, we've had this wind, strong wind blowing. You can see all the leaves on the surface. It's actually been hard to drift with the float. So fighting the leaves, you know, as a joke, we call it a leaf hatch. You know, like you get an insect hatch. You know, dealing with a good sized fish, is kind of tough to handle the fish and the net. Come on, get up. There we go. Come on. Yeah, it's a nice brown. In the neck. Come on. Got him. Isn't that a beautiful brown? Look at those colors. Gorgeous fish. This is a male. You can see actually the white that's milled. Um, so this guy is ready to spawn. And you can just see the gorgeous colors. Big mouth and that kipe on the lower jaw. These fish have so much energy. Mulligan, I got another brown. Yeah. It's a nice male. Come here, get your head up, hold your head up. Oh, he didn't want to stay there long. Now, I got to tell you about these new canoes because they're so awesome. You know, about a week and a half ago, I was bass fishing out of that model, the one that Aaron's using today. And this is the one that um, I've been fishing out of today. And they're both uh, almost ideal as far as setup. But here's a few of the neat things, the accessories that come with these new canoes. Number one, you can have an anchor. And it's nice because they've got this hole at the back, the same hole where you put the wheels in, the wheel attachment, so they're very easy to move around. Putting them into the vehicle, out of the vehicle, pulling them along grass. I've had them down to dirt paths, asphalt. And you can see what they've got here. They've got a little eye bolt system that goes right to this nice clamp that's here. That clamp, it, it's very simple. You just put the line in there and it locks it in there. So the things that I like, this by the way here, is actually a cup holder. See the cup shape here? I wish I had a hot coffee right now. But that keeps your, your pop or whatever you have in there. And what I really like is this railing system. See these rails? There's one here on this side, one on that side. Everything goes onto the rail systems. So this is the leaning bar, I like to call it, that's right here. When you don't want to use it or when we're transporting it, we just pull these clips out on both sides and the whole thing slides down. You can very easily take the seat off or even the leaning bar, 
by undoing these uh, little nuts that are there. So everything is on the, these uh, grooved railings. So you can see there's two rod holders. One rod holder's here and one rod holder's over there. Um, it's just such a neat system to fish out of. A nice dry storage compartment. Here, I'll show you at the front. I don't have anything in it, but if you want to keep something dry like your camera, which I have out, there's a nice compartment in there and it's pretty well watertight. You can see it's got the nice grommet. Everything closes with these nice bungees. So it's a really neat system, but the, the key thing about the system is that they're so stable. Even if I try to rock it, you know, from side to side, it's very difficult to do that. The other day I wanted to clean one of the new canoes out and I put both my feet trying to put weight down to get one side in the water to get a little bit of water to come in and I ended up getting a five gallon pail, filling it up with water, sloshing it, because just like today, you know, you get leaves in it and dirt and stuff. And then they've got these nice drain holes that are right here. Here's Mulligan's leash. But these nice drain holes, that, so it's self-draining. So if any water comes in, you just pop those out and the water goes out. So they're extremely stable. So earlier, both Aaron and I were standing up and casting, just like we were doing now, by waiting in the water. But you know what? You get to the point that you get spoiled. You sit down in these seats, they're so comfortable because they're elevated. In most canoes or kayaks, whether they're sit-in kayaks or sit on top, you really are so close to the floor or on the floor that your knees get sore. But because you're up about 10 inches with this nice swivel sea with the backrest, it's literally like fishing out of a high-performance bass boat. It's no wonder they call this net a basket net. You can see that the hoop has been cut right out and then a flat section has been sewn in. So this is a classic catch and release basket net. Now beside having a flat bottom, you can see that it's got pretty small mesh, but the mesh is plastic coated, which means that when it gets wet, when the fish is scraping against it, it won't get any of the slime off. Not like a mesh that's like say cotton or nylon that's abrasive on the outside of it. The other thing that a basket net does is when you land your fish, because it's got a flat bottom, the fish isn't curved. And when it's not curved, it tends not to flop around as much, which is ideal when you're trying to get the hooks out. So you can get the hooks out of it much quicker. And also when you go to release it, because it's not it doesn't have the hoop at the bottom of it, the fish isn't that far deep in the net. So it's very easy to release the fish. So if you're planning on practicing catch and release fishing, a catch and release basket net is ideal, especially for conservation. Having the right line is pretty critical in order to catch steelhead or brown trout or any of the migratory species that enter the tributaries. Fluorocarbon is an absolute must for me for more than one reason. For one, it's invisible. This is 100% fluorocarbon by suffix and it's six pound test. Sometimes I use four depending on the water clarity. The dirtier the water, you can get away with a little heavier uh, line and the lighter uh, line is basically for the gin clear water. Now this is six pound and that's probably what I use most and the properties don't float. So when I have a row bag or a single egg, that line will actually fall down in the water a little better than a traditional monofilament. So it's pretty important to uh, use a fluorocarbon in my opinion. The octopus hook we're using today, very sharp. It's laser sharp. Sometimes your float is such a far distance away, when you set the hook there's a lot of slack in the line and it's important to have a very sharp hook. And I carry a hook hone with me and make sure they're sharp at all times because sometimes they get a little bumped up on the bottom on the rocks and you have to make sure there's no burrs on it. Very important to make sure that hook is laser sharp. Aaron, you got a fish on. Oh yeah. It's this, a good brown. Really this, nice brown. Wow. I like the curvature on that rod. You know what? I got to re-rig so entertain me here. I want to see how this is done, okay? <laughs> oh yeah. This is, this is a really good fish. I have uh, I'm guessing, I mean, this is a nice bend in the rod. I'm guessing this is probably about uh, seven, eight pounds. Now we're on a tributary of Lake Ontario. And one of the nice things about a tributary on Lake Ontario is that you never know what you're gonna catch. There's all kinds of different fish species, such as the brown trout, rainbow trout, you have Chinook salmon, there's coho salmon, Atlantic salmon. And that's in the cold winter months in the spring and fall. Look at the size of this fish, Atala. Aaron, you're amazing. 
Incredible. I love the colors on the brown trout. First thing I'm going to do is just back up a bit. I don't want to be in your way. Collision, okay? You brace yourself. Okay. Dog and human yep. incoming. I love the arc on that rod. Oh yeah, you so can tell it's, it's got a big old prime, look at that. Look at the size. Curvature. Look at the size of that. That is a big fish. <laughs> now Aaron, can you do this on your own? Yeah, absolutely. Here we like go. I say, put on a show I've, for uh, me. Show everybody how it's done, because it's gonna be heavy. And you got a rubber fish, net. Well, it's gonna be a challenge. This is uh this is a big fish. Just take your time. We're really? Not in a hurry. You can go anywhere in the tributary you want on these, which is absolutely incredible. Aaron, that's a big fish. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I know you big. can't horse it in. It's very tough because I'm only using six pound test fluorocarbon, so I can't, uh, I can't put a lot of pressure on no. it. You're doing good. I'm sure it's hooked well. You yeah. got that light leader, remember? Yep. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> get it in it. Oh, oh. Keep it in there. Oh, Keep it in smokes. there. Oh, put look that, at the side. Put the rod. That's, a, that's bigger than 12 pounds. Okay. Uh, you think? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Just don't tilt the net. Okay, you got to get it in the new canoe. Oh, beautiful. Look at this. Yeah, it's much better that you grab it by the tail like that so the fish is horizontal. Yeah, the glove does help. Are you okay? Are your arms so Man, that, that, you don't have to hold that out to make it look bigger, okay, Aaron? <laughs> look at the size of that thing. That is a gorgeous That's a beautiful, female. beautiful brown. Wow. It's amazing how well those little hooks work. It is. It is absolutely amazing. I mean, this is a size 8 Gemakatsu octopus hook. Yep. And uh, you can see how small that thing is. It's tiny. Oh, yeah. Careful. I know you got your hands full. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a heavy fish. Oh, not a lot of room in the boat. I'm glad these new canoes are uh, stable. Are stable, that's for sure. I wow. Say, I think wow. she's ready. Very, very. Oh very yeah, big. It, it's a brute. Look at this. I just can't stop looking at it. Okay, let go. Of it. Listen, okay. I know you like it. Oh, you wow. You gotta let go of it, okay? No matter how much you All right, I let go of it. Way to go. Here, high five. Nice high five. Nice. Canadian sport fishing is brought to you by Suffix the world's most hardcore fishing line. Yamaha, Conquer Outdoors. Insect Defend Patch, deep free protection from biting insects. Dickies, quality workwear since 1922. It's funny, a lot of float guys like to have completely different rigs from oh, one Oh, is that right? You know? Yeah, I but mean, whatever you have confidence in, it all boils down to confidence, right? You got it. That's a nice fish. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like five pounds. Oh, it's, it's a, a nice little fish. bit bigger than that. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's why I can't control it. It's a female again. Yep. So she's got. Oh. Good <laughs> she saw you. Oh yeah. She goes. Like that, the looks of me. That's Aaron. Oh. I'm just trying, you're doing <laughs> good. Not like the looks of me at all. No. Okay. Can you get it up? I'm bit. trying. I'm trying. Here, one more time. I, I don't think want we'll, to do, stab we'll do at it. it. Yeah, we'll do it this time. I'm trying to lift up. You're doing good. Good thing the new canoe is on a anchor. Hold on one sec. I, I am trying, believe it or not. It's just going the other way. <laughs> hey, no, it, okay. They're strong, aren't they? Yeah. Come on. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Now it's bulldogging. He's trying to... Oh, oh, my God. Oh. You know what? It's okay. 